I love using Kittle to make print-on-demand designs, and one of the most popular types of designs you can make are patterns. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you five different techniques that I use to make patterns. Some of them are easy, some of them are a little more complicated, but all of them are pretty fun, and you can definitely do it. Let's jump in. Okay, method number one is the copy method. Here I've got my template set up, it's displayed size. I'm gonna go over here to elements, I'm gonna click on elements, and I'm gonna type into the search window, pineapple. We get back a pineapple right there. So I'm gonna use the copy method, and the copy method is just holding down the Alt key, and when you hold down the Alt key, you can just drag and copy instantly. As I copy and I make this design, I'm gonna put a link to Kittle in the video description. Just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. That just means if you click on the link and you purchase the Kittle subscription, I would receive a small commission. So here's a great example of how you can quickly create a pattern. Now it is visual. I'm just using my visual eyeballs here to make sure the pattern looks good. But if you want something that's a bit randomized, this will definitely work. You could also move things around a tiny bit to make them off center. And I think that looks like a great pattern. And you could stick that on a pillowcase, a t-shirt, what have you. Method number two, I call the group method. Here I've got my template set up. I've got an orange background. I've typed into the elements cat. I'm gonna click on this little gray cat here. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make them a bit smaller. I'm gonna use the copy method. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. And I'm just gonna leave it like this now. I've only got the two. I'm gonna highlight them both by clicking Control A, right click, and now I'm going to group them. There's this ungroup and group, I'm gonna group. Now it becomes one. So from here, I can click the Alt key again, and now I've got another set. Now I'm gonna do Control A, select them all, group them. So now they're like one design, and I'm going to do the Alt key again. So now I'm gonna move them, say, down to here. And I'm gonna do this one more time, and I'm gonna move them down to here. So this now becomes as if it's one element. I'm gonna do Control A, group them all, and now I can simply copy this down using the Alt method. So it's similar to the first method, ex except instead of randomizing the cats, I'm creating sort of a unified front and then copying that design down. You can similarly do this if you'd like to do repeating patterns but have more than one graphic. So here I've got a different background. I'm gonna click on this cat silhouette and now I've got four silhouettes. So I'm gonna put one here, one here, one here, and one here. I'm gonna highlight them all. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, move this little guy around over here. And now I'm gonna do Control A, group them. And now I'm going to do the Alt key and I'm gonna move them. So this pattern now can get really complicated but you can really make it quick because you've got one grouping. And just like that, I've now got a complete zoo full of cats and that can be a really nice pattern as well. Technique number three is what I call the align method. And what I'm gonna do here is I've typed into the elements dog. I'm gonna pick this one picture. I'm gonna make them a bit smaller. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the Alt key copy feature. And I'm not super worried about getting it completely aligned up perfectly. I'm gonna do these four highlight them all by doing control A, and now I'm going to align them. So I'm gonna align them right in the middle, just like that. Now, if you do not group them, and you align them center, they're all gonna move into one, and that's not what you want. So control Z undoes that. Move these so that they're kinda of close together. Highlight them all, make sure they're aligned middle, and now group them, and then highlight them center. Because it's thinking it's now one design, it'll highlight them and be in the middle. And now you can copy this down and you can make these perfectly aligned. So I'm just going to drag these down, copy them, and now I can highlight them all, and I can make sure that they're center aligned. So now you've got a pretty good looking grid all the way down. The next method, I'm actually gonna use this same example. I call it the grid method. And what you can do is click on this little settings button right there at the top, and you can turn on the grid. It says here at the bottom, show grid. So I'm gonna click show grid. Now you can make the grid smaller or larger, and we can see now the grid's popped up. Now I'm gonna make the background a bit darker so you can see it a bit easier. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my dogs so that they're two from the top. I'll do middle align. And now for this one, I'm gonna move it so it's two from the bottom of the dog to the top of the dog, and I'm gonna do a line. So as long as you do this consistently all the way down, you're going to have a perfectly spaced design. I'm just using the align tool to align it in the middle and then I'm using the grid to align the spacing in between. I'm gonna move this down a tiny bit, down to the bottom, and I'll do one more here at the top. Control C, Control V. I'll drag this up, and I'll make sure it's two 
above. Now, if you want to make sure everything's on the same page, what you can do is highlight everything and you can group it. You don't have to group it, but you could. But you can also grab the corner and you can shrink everything up or down and you can manipulate it as if it's one graphic. That's a really nice feature. So I'm going to make it about that size. I am going to group it just because I don't want to accidentally scrunch them all together now when I do center and then I can also do middle. So now that is a perfectly centered grid design and I did it all in seconds. I'm going to turn off my grid. I'm going to change my background so it's a bit lighter and just like that I've got a beautiful pattern that looks fantastic on a t-shirt or a fine art print. Okay and the last method actually uses artificial intelligence. It's the AI method I call it. So I'm in my grid here. I'm going to make my grid a little bit darker so you can see it. I'm going to go here to the left hand side to Kittle AI and I'm going to type in now to my image pineapple pattern and I'm going to click generate image. Okay and we get back a pineapple pattern. Now I can make this larger or smaller. I can move it up to the top. Now if you want to repeat this pattern you may run into a problem. I'm going to hold down the alt key and repeat it but you'll notice it's not exact. I can't line it up and repeat it. So what you want to do, I'm going to delete this out and I'm going to type in here to the chat window pineapple repeating pattern and I'm also going to type in the word symmetrical. So it's a repeating symmetrical pattern and I'm going to generate the image. Okay and now we get a pattern here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger so we can easily see it and now I can hold down the alt key. I can copy it and I can line up now exactly where the pattern begins and ends and then I can copy it down to the next one. So over time I can make this the entire width and length of the design. Okay I'm happy with the way that looks. I'm going to do control A, group it and now I'm just going to simply hold down the alt key and just drag it over to the right hand side and I can match this up exactly. And so just like that you could make an absolutely ginormous mural painting and it's all repeating patterns the whole way down. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Again I'll put the link to Kittle in the video description below. Check it out. I highly recommend it. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your print on demand journey using the powers of Kittle.